Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Mentis Endovascular Simulator. I'm going to speak about endovascular simulation over the next 10 minutes. Um, we hope to set a good standard for young trainee. What is simulation? Simulation is a helpful tool to imitate what happened in real life. I will give here two examples, which is a flight simulation and military simulation. If you can watch the video on the left-hand side, and the video on the right hand side the one on the left hand side is a flight simulation so it's a, a cockpit which imitate taking off and landing of an aeroplane um, there is no aeroplane it's all in the in land but you can have exactly all the scenarios that you need to be trained on on the right hand side you can see this is also simulation of a fighting situation with a lot of enemies, a lot of space, all is being done on virtual reality. And it will give you an assessment how the military being performed. On flight simulation, it's now mandatory to have a hundred hour of flight simulation before getting into real life, same with military use. Surgical simulation also started and taking a lot of intention in the last few years. This is endovascular simulation uh, that will simulate uh, the laparoscopic tools inside um, a laparoscopic procedure. Here you can have how you can uh, knot a tie using flamingo needle holder, how you can do cautery, how you can do dissection of soft tissues, and how to uh, make uh, multiple procedures. Uh, it's a very helpful tool and very necessary for laparoscopic surgeon. Now the Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland have started to have part of the exam a simulation of trauma because you can't have candidate uh, being examined on a car accident patient. So now you can have a simulation of a car accident, chest trauma causing hemothorax patient was pulled to A and E department and then what to do for examination, get you the question, where to put the chest drain, where to put the x-ray, and this is one of part of the exam of the Royal College of Ireland. So what we have is one of the best simulator in the world, which is Mentis Simulator, American manufacturer. It has a beautiful advantage of tactile feedback. It will give you information about your procedure. It has about 500 sensors. It gives you real uh, life situation and we have multiple modules for EVAR, about 12 modules. You will get CME accreditation if you pass 70% of the questions and 70% of the uh, skills that you are able to perform. There is a physiological parameters, there is medication that you can give and also with this machine you can put a CT angiogram of a specific patient to get terrain before you do the case. My advice is read the scenario carefully, uh, come to the simulator room 15 minutes before your time to start, prepare your plan, do the sizing, actual measurement, and please have a slow movement because there are more than five sens 500 sensors inside the machine. If you have a rapid movement, it will cause hacking into the machine and you will not get a good advancement of your catheter. We will give you a final report about how much you have performed. This great effort is done by Servier Scientific Office in Egypt, which is quite valuable tool over your career. We have selected uh, a VAR module because the feasibility of young junior staff to perform it is quite difficult and we're going to have few modules, you're going to be trained on them, and you will get in your booklet the exact history examination and angiogram of that patient. Our learning objectives is how you plan and size EVAR, how to insert, position, and deploy EVAR device, handling stenotic arteries, and handling additional extension, how you can do embolization technique, and how you can manage endoleak and uh, you will get assess on these parameters. 
The training module multiple. There is intracerebral. There are one for TVAR, one below the knee, one for carotid, and the one we're going to train on today is on abdominal aorta. There is also one for iliac and one for foot vessels, and one for thoracic TVAR. There is a huge advantage that you can put patient angiogram inside the the page inside the simulator, and you can train yourself before doing real case. Remember that you can have rupture when you are doing, if you do rapid inflation to wrong the size balloon, you can actually trigger rupture. This is one of the cases that you will see rupture. You can follow the blood pressure and pulse and you selected a bigger size balloon. You done the balloon angioplasty to the artery and after balloon angioplasty, rupture happened. Where you can see, this is when you do an angiogram and you see the rupture and observe the pulse and blood pressure. And this is a real situation and can happen in EVAR. You can get rupture of arteries and into leak as well. There is an accompanying teaching platform, which is by Edmodo. And there is a password that you will find in your booklet. It's totally free of charge. And here on this teaching platform, you will get books, videos, uh, live recorded cases. And you will get question to be assessed because EVAR simulation not just the technique, but it's a whole amount of knowledge and information to be implemented. Um, this is a landmark paper that I will put in this presentation, which is endovascular EVAR training, a preliminary study, which showed that it uh, helped you a lot to have simulator. And I am quite sure in the very near future, it will become mandatory in your endovascular training to get a simulator, simulator training. These are the parameters you're going to be assessed, how you are handling the wire, how you inserted the catheter, how you perform the angiogram, and these are the grades between one to four according to your performance, and the grades will be collected at the end for the final assessment. I hope this is a beneficial introduction for you. Wish you good luck and uh, good advancement in your career. Dr. Muhammad Omar Al-Farouk.